Hello and welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me once again for another night of Facebook Live. It is indeed a blessing to be here with you guys. Also, we want to recognize those that catch us on the replay from YouTube and or SoundCloud. It is indeed a blessing to have our special guest host with us tonight, Pastor Reverend Alicia Pitts. Hey, well, y'all. <laughs> I'm yes, trying to get this box party together. It's all right. She is in the house, guys. Uh, I am your host, uh, and Trisha Bray Smith author, educator, and public speaker. You can find me at www.antrishabraysmith.weebly.com. Also, you can check out my books and resources on Amazon. So as we get started here tonight, guys, if you would go ahead and like and share this video so that others on your timeline can join in the discussion with us as well. We would greatly appreciate that. Miss Alicia Pitts, go ahead yeah. and tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is you do, honey. Well, I am a servant first before I get into all the spiel. <laughs> I am a servant first, but I always say many gifts, but much responsibility. I work for social services as a Medicaid worker dealing with um, approving health coverage insurance dealing with the Obamacare. I'm pretty sure everyone has heard of that. I am also, uh, that's my nine to five. And um, I am a police chaplain for the Millville Police Department, lead chaplain for Memorial High School, staff chaplain for New Jersey Department of Corrections. And um, as I stated before, I uh, am a servant. I love helping people. I'm a four time author, Christian speaker, and mentor and i guess you can say i'm a self-help spiritual guru and i believe that uh you have to work on yourself before you can help somebody else because a lot of times we are trying to save other people when we ourselves need to be saved so we got to do that inner work first awesome and well spoken tonight guys we are talking about intimacy we're addressing those issues with intimacy. And I know that that is something that I have not brought to this uh, platform uh, much before. I have touched very lightly on that, but I do feel like that it is a very needed uh, topic here. So I had to bring in my reinforcement tonight. <laughs> so I had to bring her in and we're just going to have a conversation and just let it flow as it may. Yeah. I know that I have shared with you guys that uh, when I think of myself, I don't think of myself as that romantic, intimate type of person. I'm very, I'm not a very touchy feeling person. I am just straightforward and to the point. And uh, so I don't feel like I'm an expert in this area at all. Uh, I don't even look at those issues. And oftentimes when we have issues relating to something such uh, Come on. as intimate as intimacy and how we're feeling and when it comes to relationships, that is something that I know we women tend to shy away from discussing mm -hmm. with one another because we take on that uh, image like something's wrong with us. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Pence, can you help us out tonight uh, when we think about women in the so many uh, challenges that we have with intimacy, uh, is it normal for us to struggle when it comes to uh, expressing that intimacy toward a partner? I would say um, it shouldn't be a struggle. It should not be a struggle. Um, I can't speak for anyone else. I can only tell my story. <laughs> and you are looking at someone who was molested at the ages of seven, 11, and 14. And so as I got older uh, in my 18s, 18 and 19, um, I struggled with intimacy because of what was done to me. And um, 
as I tell people all the time, as a child, um, you, your mind can't even fathom what has happened to you. And it's as you get older, then it, it seems like everything starts coming in as to what actually happened to you. And so I could remember uh, dating guys. And as soon as we would get intimate, I would get this scared feeling and I wouldn't go through with it. And um, I was, there uh, was nothing wrong with the attraction. I was att attracted to these men, but for some odd reason, I would get this scared feeling. I wouldn't go through with it. So I knew it had a lot to do with me, you know, me being molested at the ages of seven, 11 and 14. And uh, let me just throw this scripture in here. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. So even though this was a bad thing that had happened to me at the ages of seven, 11 and 14, and I kind of say this, say this uh, facetiously, um, it helped me not to get pregnant sooner. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it helped me not to get pregnant sooner and I got pregnant later. <laughs> So, um, and as I got older in my uh, 20s, well, let me backtrack. So, um, I, there was one point where I was um, dealing with suicide. I was dealing with suicide, um, but there was a lot of variables, not only dealing uh, with the molestation, uh, being bullied at school, uh, dealing with rejection from kids at school. I knew my family loved me, but I was looking for the outside acceptance. I was looking for the outside acceptance. And so I remember my grandfather and I knew it was God that had revealed it to him because I hadn't said anything to anyone, but he told my mom, he said, um, there's some suicide spirits after her. And sure enough, uh, it was the truth. Um, I tried to walk in front of traffic, hoping people were not paying attention. Um, I popped pills and um, what ended up happening, um, I was in school and I, I didn't, you mind you, this was years ago, I'm 46 now, um, but I was around 14 years old and I, I believe I had told some students, I told some teachers and that was my way of asking for help. And so what ends up happening, one of the teachers reports it to a guidance counselor. And so what happens is I end up going to counseling outside of school. But during this counseling, none of my issues were never addressed. None of my issues were never addressed. And so here it is, I, I have to go to God, spirituality. I have to go to God because uh, no one can help me in this state that I'm in. But one thing I did know as I got older that I said, you know, I'm not married, but when I get married, I don't want to inflict this on my husband because my husband didn't have nothing to do with what happened to me. And so my prayer was, God, before I get married, I need you to heal me completely because I don't want to go in, in, into a marriage or into a, a relationship uh, um, inflicting problems with intimacy, right? Um, in a marriage when this man didn't have anything to do with anything. And, and so at that point, um, I had, again, to, to work on me, work on me. And the key is wanting healing. See, because some of us, uh, 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 we, we, we talk a good game, but when you want healing, uh, when you want to do anything, you're moved to action, right? You're moved to action. And, uh, so I had to start working on me, working on how Alicia looked at herself, you know, dealing yeah. with, uh, low self-esteem. I've been there and done it. Um, I share this all the time. Uh, when I was younger, I had these coat coke bottle glasses what the kids were calling it right they was real thick uh it was no beauty to behold of the lenses okay <laughs> and so um I, I tell people they they were uh birth control glasses let me put it that way <laughs> they were birth control glasses and so in my mind 
as being a child, I was like an ugly duckling and now I'm a beautiful swan. But it's so important on how we look at ourselves. Why? Because a lot of times how we view ourselves is how people treat us. You know, so I had to start doing that inner work of liking, liking, because there's a difference in liking and loving and yeah. both is important that I had to like Alicia for who Alicia yeah. was and love Alicia for yeah. who she is and who she's becoming. And I think that plays a, a, a big part because a lot of times we will, people are looking for people to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And happiness has to start with you first, you know, yeah. and those who come into your life where whether the relationship is, is a friendship or a romantic relationship, those people that come in your life, they should be adding to your happiness and not taking it away. But you can't look at a human being and, and, and expect them to make you happy. It starts with you first. You're right. Miss Alicia, you're a you just hit so much in that <laughs> time frame there. Oh my goodness, just overwhelmed. I know that we all somewhere in that can relate. We yeah. find ourselves in one another's stories. Come on and here. So much of your story simulates my own story, okay. you know? So uh, as you were talking, I can see myself, um, hiding behind your face because you're telling it your, your words they were just like a, a, a mirror uh to my own uh issues and the root causes of a lot of challenges that i had uh struggled with as a young adult but also uh it didn't go away those things carried on into my adulthood those things made decisions for me. Those things went to bed with me. Those things woke up with me. I took them to work with me. And I just found myself in a cycle of dissatisfaction, dysfunction, depression, anxiety. So many things surfaced as a result of issues that were never dealt with. And you and I are around the same age so I know it was the culture of that generation. And so many of you listening tonight, you're in that same culture of that generation. And so there are some things that we still deal with as adults, but when we really look at it, it's the little girl within us that never had her voice or had her say to, um, deal with those things so i appreciate you sharing that uh because that was intimate all within itself just sharing and um allowing us to hear that because so many of us are hidden within that story and so now to uh bring it out into the open and give it a voice ladies we know that we are not alone and any issues what I've heard her say is that any issues that we've dealt with as it relates to intimacy has a connection somewhere down the line. There's a root cause to the issues that we deal with. There may still be some things that we need to give a voice to that has laid dormant so far down the line in our life, but it's still waking up with us, it's still going to bed with us, it's still uh, attending church with us, it's still doing all these things. It, it, it's still there, it's not going anywhere. So suppressing the voice is not the way we overcome the issues that we have. So um, uh, Alicia, I'm just curious to know, um, you said that we shouldn't. So, so give us a little bit of hope there for those of us that are still struggling with intimacy. Give us a little hope. How is it that you overcome or how is it that you're overcoming the challenges as they related to intimacy? Um, again, just doing that, that inner work. Uh, even the world tells you before you can fix a problem, you got to acknowledge that one is there. So um, you, you got to be honest with yourself. If you don't be honest with no one else, 
you have to be honest with yourself. And I can remember at the age of 14, um, when uh, I ex experienced this molestation and I reached out to someone that I admired and they were so insensitive. <laughs> they were so insensitive. They said, uh, what, you got a sign on your, do you got a sign on your back saying molest me? Now, mind you, I'm a child. You know, I'm not asking for this to, to happen to me. And it just shows you, like you said before, dealing with the culture, especially for uh, African-Americans, uh, we're so insensitive. And especially, like you said, during the time frame uh, uh, that we grew up in, uh, a lot of things were not talked about. And, 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 and so before I can even go there with about the healing part, of, of, of not struggling with intimacy, um, it didn't stop there. Be there, there was a process, <laughs> uh, uh, years of process because what ends up happening, okay, now that I, 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 I've been molested, molested at the ages of seven, um, 11 and 14, and some of these molestations happened to me by people, right? That I trusted right? That should have been taking care of me and protecting me. And so now what happens around 18 or 19, right? We were born into sin, shaping into iniquity. Now I'm dealing with attraction of the same sex, right? Because remember, I knew my family loved me, but now I'm looking for the outside acceptance. And the, the truth be told, it wasn't even about sex. It was about companionship, having someone just to relate to. And so it evolved basically into a bigger monster, right? Uh, they have a saying, curiosity killed the cat. Well, that's just, that's what happened to me and how I end up going into uh, the lesbian lifestyle. But how I end up coming out, again, my process of deliverance, it took time. It's not to say that God cannot deliver you overnight because he can, but my process, it was a process over time because every time I would go back and be in a relationship with a woman, it was like, okay, why am I here? I was no longer being fulfilled and it was nothing wrong with the relationship per se, but I knew God was delivering me. And so now to catapult forward in regards to not struggling again we have to be honest how are you going to be healed if you don't be honest and then the other thing is like i said you have to want healing there are people and i've counseled people right we are talking about people way past grown we ain't talking about uh late teens we ain't even talking about in 20s we're talking about 50 on up right they're still dealing with issues from childhood and what I, what, I, what I see, and it's been a while that I've been seeing this, you have uh, uh, people, women that are well past grown, still need to be nurtured, right? For some reason, and, and mind you, you have some people, that they had two parents in the home, but for whatever reason, that there was missing nurturing. And uh, so what I see now, and I call it an, a, a, an attention demon, right? Uh, they're going to spill out their problems, right, to whoever will listen, but they will never take the action to be healed, never taking the action to be healed. And that's a problem because, uh, uh, you know, they're looking for, they're looking for the wrong type of attention, sympathy, you know, uh, different things of that nature. But when do we move from being a victim to a victor? But the thing is, number one, we got to acknowledge that we got a problem. Yes. Right? Be honest with, if you don't be honest with nobody else, be honest with yourself, right? Then we have to want healing. One thing I realized about deliverance, you have to want it. Um, a, a good friend of mine, um, Apostle, um, he said something that was very profound. And he said, this is the scenario he gave. Um, and if I take your purse, you're going to want your purse back because I took it. But if you give me your purse, you're giving it to me 
So you're going to be cool because you gave it to me. And it's just like God's. Sometimes God just don't take things from us. He wants us to willingly give it to him because if he take it from us, we're going to be looking, we're going to be looking for it later. Why? Because he took it from us. So deliverance, you have to want deliverance. You got to want to be healed and then start working on it. And uh, let, let me stop you right there. Uh, you said a mouthful, just that we have to want it. And so many of us, because of the condition of our churches now, this is what I found. And I talk about it in my book, Time to Talk. The pastor leading us so far to salvation. But salvation alone is not going to do it. Mm -hmm. It's that deliverance that we have to get to. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's where a lot of us are stuck. A lot of times they lead us to the point to where we have the salvation, but when it comes to deliverance, I think that's where, if we're not seeking it for ourselves, a lot of times, that's where a lot of us get stuck. We get stuck somewhere between salvation and deliverance. And I see that a lot of times is that we don't know how to get to that point of deliverance. And if we have leaders, that are not delivered themselves, how can they lead us into the place of deliverance? And, they, and, can. And <laughs> they can. And even uh, in my process of deliverance, dealing with homosexuality, I, when I came to the point where I, number one, humbled myself, right? We got to get pride out the way. Pride is a big thing that will keep you from deliverance. Why? Because nobody wants to ask for help but if i'm drowning right peter was drowning at least he had enough sense to say lord save me some of us don't have enough sense to open up our mouths to say look i'm I, i'm drowning i need help right and and so with that process of my deliverance i could remember once i got to the point where i put my pride aside i humbled myself i've made myself vulnerable now I go to the leaders that I think could help me. And guess what? They could not. And so then it had to be a thing between me and God. You know, I, I remember one time I went to a leader and I mean, I, after service, I mean, the, the, the leader preached with such conviction. I went up to the altar. Look, I need help. You know what they told me? Ain't nothing wrong with you. You good. That's what they told me. But I knew within myself, I needed help. Another leader went to him. Oh, we're going to get a plan together. Well, guess what? The plan never came. And so at that point, I had to hash. It was between me and God hashing out my deliverance. But again, wanting it, right? And when you want something bad enough, it will move you to action. That's what the word motivation comes from. Yes, it moves you yes. To action. You have inspiration, right? But then there's motivation, which moves you to action. Look, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to continue to be broken. So now I need to start healing and I need God to give me discernment, insight, right? Revelation on how to, to, to bring me to wholeness. And, 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 that's, and, and that's very important. So number one, we got to acknowledge that we got a problem. We got to want it, right? And then we got to start working on it and, and, and stop playing the victim. At some point, when do you get over all that stuff, right? And look, I'm, like I said, I'm 46 years old. I can't afford to start over. You know, I can't live in the past. You got to let it go. <laughs> let it go for your sake. You have to let it go. So what true. You know, I always, I always say I got more days behind me than I got in front of me. So, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. I, I got to press toward what I believe and I do believe in deliverance. And that is a big part of uh, what I do in my first book, uh, Recreating a Better Me. That book is designed to help women overcome the issues yes. that we deal with so long that 
we've been in church. Yes, we've been in church. We've been there. We've done that. We've, we've been good girls. We're good girls, but we still have issues and there are still root, uh, roots and sometimes even bitter roots yes. that we need to get to. And that's what that book does. It asks you the hard questions. And if you get that book, Recreating a Better Me, and you do the work, I will guarantee that if you get the book and you do the work in whatever area, and, and, and that's the way it's designed, you don't have to do the work in the entire book. Do the work in the area that affects you most. And I guarantee that it will begin to break up all that ground and you can start doing the work that you need to get you to a better place. It's time out, guys, that we deal with these intimate issues, issues that are affecting our everyday life, issues that we can't even look at ourselves in a, um, des uh, you know, to, to know that we're desirable. And yes, it causes issues. I heard what you said with homosexuality. And that is something that we women will uh, sometimes never admit to, especially not open and on an open platform. But if you are a woman abused, scorned or traumatized or abused, when those issues get you to the point where they have you, yes, those things cross your mind. And yes, those things uh, sometimes uh, can take a forefront in our lives. But at the same time, when we need deliverance and when we have issues, if it's not in uh, homosexuality where we're attracted to uh, same sex, it is in uh, promiscu uh, promiscuous uh, behavior where we're jumping from bed to bed to bed and it's unhealthy and um, we're having baby out of, after baby after baby and uh, so many different things go along with that because we need that affirmation we need that validation to know that we are desirable to somebody now a lot of the issues that i dealt with especially in the earlier years was that i wasn't uh so much physically attracted but it was an emotional thing it was that i needed that or desired that emotional stability to uh feel wanted or to feel desired or to feel attracted and so there are women I know that are in marriages and, and still deal with that uh, spirit of homosexuality, that spirit of suicide, that spirit of lust to where uh, everything is connected, not just because it's there, but to a root cause of an issue that we have yet to unaddress. And it affects us intimately intimacy because our, our minds our minds pretty much control the actions that we're going to produce mm -hmm. and when we're unstable or dissatisfied and 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 when we're watching all kind of things and consuming all these things through social media and these uh, media streams television and things like that you can tell when somebody's mind is not in a uh, healthy place you can tell when those intimate uh, areas are uh, not being addressed because I tell you what it comes out through the conversation and we that are wise when we're having these conversations uh, with people that have these issues well uh, we have to give these people a voice to speak give that a voice because I don't believe that the issues we have whether it relates to intimacy or whether it relates to uh, attraction or whatever it is I don't think that if we continue to stay silent, that it's going anywhere. All that it's going to do is continue to sprout up bitter roots, which we're, we're going to live this life miserable, not fulfilled, not living that abundance that we're promised because we're continue to be stuck in the past of our issues. So uh, I, guys, uh, we're here today. Today, we stand with you to give you a voice that if you're having issues with intimacy, only you know, only you know you're hiding behind our faces and it's okay because we're the ones here on the front street and we're gonna talk about it. I don't feel ashamed to tell you the issues that I deal with uh, relating to intimacy now 
nor the issues that I dealt with then. I praise God that I've been delivered to the point that uh, I don't have to jump from bed to bed to bed to bed to bed looking for that uh, satisfaction or that validation that I needed because that little girl was still struggling with who she was or her identity or uh, just feeling attracted or wanted or desired by someone. So I praise God for that. And, uh, you know, marriage didn't fix everything. And that's where a lot of us think. We think we have these issues. If we get married, it's going to solve all our issues. But no, if we have issues that are unaddressed, when we get married, guess what gets married with us? Those issues go down the aisle with us. They marry with us. They jump in the bed with us. They wake up with us. Same cycle over and over and over again. So... Uh, Alicia, I know that you have some resources over there. And as we're winding down tonight, I would like for you to share some of those resources that you have for everyone uh, to give them a little uh, insight on uh, who you are and what it is that you have going over there. And also tell us a little bit about your new book that you have out so that we can go and get that resource as well. Okay, before I do that, I want to talk about not just the intimacy between a man and a woman, because there's good intimacy amongst our, our sisters in Christ and all of that. And, and the reason why I want to bring that up, because in my process of deliverance with homosexuality, um, there was a time where when I would get close to a woman, I would back away because I was always checking to make sure my, my motives was right, you know, and um, my, one of my former pastors and a good friend of mine, they helped me, helped me through that, where that when I would get close to someone, I would not back away. So there's good intimacy too. We need that, we need that balance. We need that balance. So that was one of the things that um, stuck to me in my, my, my for, uh, forethought when you were talking. Um, but um, as um, my sister said here, um, I have two books. One is Let It Go For Your Sake, Forgive. There's Another Way to Live, Keep Going Back to Love. We've been hearing it recently. Self-care is the best care. You know, uh, you, you, you have to love you in order for you to be able to love someone else properly. So, and you need to forgive yourself, right? Let go of those things that uh, you, you, you coulda, shoulda, woulda, those regrets. You got to let them go so you can move forward. You need to let it go so you can move forward. The next book uh, that you guys have been seeing as of late, Homosexuality is in Heterosexuals Relax. This is a book that is going to educate the church on how to love the homosexual and also giving the homosexual, those who want to come out of the lifestyle, the process, what they need to take. Okay. Now, some of y'all might be saying, well, I ain't got no issue with that and I don't need it, but it is a resource, right? If you are a Christian, if you are a, uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Bible says in order to win souls, one must be wise. And a lot of times we want to browbeat people over the head with the scripture. But in this season, in this day and time, you are going to have to build relationship, which will earn trust, which will open up the door for you to have a dialogue to be able to minister to those in homosexuality, right? Because they're already feeling that, especially when they come to the church, they are already expecting to get rejection. And so this is why dialogue is so important, right? We got to sit down and have a conversation. So uh, those are uh, the two books. Um, you also can go on my website, aliciapitts.com, and there is a free takeaway. And it is an ebook on learning how to apologize. Some of us, we don't like to say we're sorry. We get locked, y'all. We don't want to say we're sorry. So you can go to my website, and that is a freebie uh, that you can get off of my um, website. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I did put it in the comment section for you guys that 
uh, want to catch that in the comment stream that's alicia pitts uh, .com. Uh, you have shared so much with us tonight we appreciate you joining Amen. us blessings to so, you thank you for having me so you guys that are um dealing with issues as it relates to uh intimacy uh you don't have to uh, share it out with the world world but now you have the resources to uh, make that first step and, and let's get some help, much needed help right there in the comfort of our own home. Um, uh, she's just given a wealth of, of information. She has books and resources for you. Uh, don't be so closed minded guys when it comes to uh, reading new materials because we know that uh, life as we know it, the old stuff and the old way and the old mindset, the old uh, way of doing things is not working. We're in a state and time now to where we can't be so closed-minded that we can't learn new things to further uh, go and live out our purpose. Uh, we can't exclude people based on uh, what we think or what we've been conditioned to think and to hate. That doesn't conquer anything. You know, so we have to uh, find the way to interact with all people and respect all people for whatever uh, issues they deal with. You too have issues or you too had issues and you still have things that you're dealing with that you suppress. And so the only way that we can overcome anything is that we wrap our arms around one another and show each other that love and respect and that support that is so needed, especially in today's such troubling times, guys. So I appreciate you taking out the time and the sacrifice for joining me tonight. That's all right. And uh, I'm going to leave the last words to you before we bid everybody a good night. Go ahead. Amen. I just want to say also, um, you talked about um, people not talking about where they've been. And what I realized when you are truly delivered, you can talk about where you've been and you can talk about it without being emotional because the healing has take has taken place. Uh, the Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So your story and your voice is very important, but you can't tell it unless you have been healed and delivered fully, right? There's, there's freedom in it, right? And you'll be able to share to be able to help someone else because the truth of the matter is we didn't go through these things for ourselves. We went through it so we could help someone else, right? So someone else can get the victory just like we received the victory. Amen. So uh, I just wanted to say that um, the Lord bless and keep you is my prayer. Um, my door is, is open. Amen. Um, I always tell people, don't waste my time or yours either. If you ain't ready to do the work, don't inbox me because I ain't got I ain't got time to be wasting. Don't inbox me if you're not ready to do the work. Um, because what I realized a lot of times, people will take up your time, and you give them instruction, you give them direction, and and they don't they don't do anything with it. So if you're ready to do the work, then you you contact me. But if not, Leave me alone. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, that's one thing I, I, I protect is my time. We can't get that back, guys. Amen. I, like I said, I have so many behind me, and I know I don't have that many in front of me, so I'm definitely Amen. not going to waste time. <laughs> uh, guys, I appreciate you sacrificing your time to be here with us tonight. I knew you would enjoy it. I knew it was going to be wonderful, and I am so grateful that you sacrificed your time to join me. So, guys, if you would, go ahead and like and share this video if you hadn't done that already so that others on your timeline can enjoy it. And meet me back here again tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Central Time. Good night, everybody. Blessings to you.